Hello my Sock Universe! Early morning and I have actually decided to not keep the front light on. Let's see how this will work in this one. Just a bit too light sensitive this morning. In any case, I am very proud to tell you I managed to put all my 15 seriatins that I have on this wall. Torino here is new and I'm very Venezia. We can find... I said I, it was so tempting after the performance of Milan, and we'll talk about Milan, to put on a Milan shirt because I, I was thoroughly entertained. How, how often will I be able to wear Venezia this season? So here you go, Venezia. And it's a beautiful shirt to say. As with all my other review videos, I'm not gonna talk only about the results this weekend, but we also gonna uh, talk a little bit about the transfer window. And I would say we'll start with that. I mean, I can give you the results and let's start with the transfer window. Uh, in many, many ways, uh, one would think that it is all about uh, losses to the league. I mean, the top four transfers is Lukaku out, is Donnarumma out, is Hakimi out, and is Ronaldo out. Um, which, of course, did got a lot of star power out. I mean, uh, Lukaku, Inter needed to sell. And I think they actually not all... I, I actually have to say, Inter didn't do all that badly. I mean... Yes, it would have been nice to keep Lukaku and maybe Hakimi, who have been very instrumental in the run to the title. However, you know, you got Denzel Dumfries in, you then got Edin Dzeko, which is not maybe the exact same goal threat, but you have a little bit there. Then you also got Cialanoglu from Milan, uh, although uh, I said it before, I honestly think that uh, Cialanoglu is a little bit of an over rated player in many ways so he got you got him on, on free so there are some good things at Inter doing we still have to see how this Inter team is gelling and we'll, we'll talk about their performance now as well but overall I think Inter did not really disgrace themselves um as for Juventus I think if they would not have gotten Locatelli it could have been a very very bad transfer window for them, I mean, bringing Moise Kempek, yeah, he did very well this weekend as well. So, yeah, I have to say, you Juve, and then you lose in Cristiano, which anyway was always gonna happen. Yep. Um, the biggest incoming transfer is Tammy Abraham to Roma, who already made an immediate impact. I'm very curious to see how Roma will do. And of course, uh, the other thing, I have to talk about my team, uh, who honestly, Milan, I think, except for letting two players go on a free, which I'm, uh, which is something that cannot really be happy uh, in Donnarumma and Cialanoglu, and there is also the Cassie renewal might be headed in the same uh, direction as well. I think other than that, they did a pretty good business. I actually am quite happy with the way um, Milan, you got Tomori locked up, which probably pro, 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 for, for, for the amount of money they paid was a steal. Uh, you got Tonali uh, also locked up on a much, much uh, smaller car country, even reducing your wage bill. You got a really good replacement for Del for Donnarumma, maybe not the exact the same level, but you're not losing much with Mike Magnon. And then, you know, uh, other players coming in Giroud, I think I actually really like um, of what's happening there. Uh, as for, I think we also need to talk Napoli. I think they have no uh, Paul Polpolitano for sure in there. Other than that, Anguissa, they got, uh, you know, it's not the, uh, not that great uh, uh, of uh, add-ons, but then on this, uh, Napoli also didn't lose many players, so that's why they might be a uh, strong squad going forward as well. So, Let's move into what was happening uh, this weekend. Uh, quite some interesting results. Um, we have Venezia, as I said, I'm wearing Venezia. Uh, they're getting their first win, scoring their first goals with uh, Henry, uh, Hen Hen Henry 13th already. Uh, at that point, already deserved it. Uh, um, 
lead they had many chances in the first half uh they doubled their lead um through okay uh okereke in the six sixty eight and then a penalty laid on by, uh, by rami maybe gives a little bit that there was a call for penalty for empoli again but i didn't think but uh, venezia should have probably pulled it away right there and then but very happy that uh venezia have won that one. Napoli Juve, I think, was probably the standout fi fixture. Um, mitigating circumstances for Juve, no South American players because they just had played. So I think the scheduling for Juve was a little bit off on the other side. You know, you play Champions League, so they needed to play on a Saturday. Um, so no South American player, no Chiesa. So a very, very thin squad. And Napoli really, really uh, controlled them. However, um, uh, Manolas makes a really bad mistake when Morata can intercept his ball, run to his goal and make it 1-0 for Juve. And I, at that, that point, I think most people were thinking, yeah, this is a typical Juve performance. And uh, Napoli, despite having all, all other positions, really couldn't cope well with that for a while. Uh, especially in the first half, there were not many chances from Na Napoli when Juve could keep the game relatively calm. However, second half, the pressure came on and I think Juve did not even have a chance then anymore. Or if it was, it was nothing really notable. Uh, it was lots of pressure from Napoli. However, Juve held tight if it wasn't for individual errors. Uh, a shot from Insigne was... I don't know what Chesney wanted to do. He wanted probably to catch it. It was too hard, hard, hard for that, so he had to parry it outside. So he kind of lets it drop and it falls to Politano, who, who, who just can put it in, in the net. 1-1, one, one, uh, deservedly so at that point. Um, and then uh, late on, another mistake. I mean, Moise Kane had to come on. I think it is a, a corner kick and then Moise Kane, or, or, or was it free kick? It falls on his head and I guess he wants to head it back to, 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 to the goalie, but not very car controlled and Jason makes his best save, however, to the feet of Koulibaly, who just needs to pull it in the net. Overall, Napoli got a very, very deserved win. Uh, Juve, out of three games, only one point and I think many are already calling Juve out after this uh, not so good start to the season. Um, I want to hold my horses. As I said there were a lot of mitigating circumstances to this particular loss here and yeah the next game is Milan a huge game uh, I think after that game we will know probably a teeny bit more about Juve uh, in a penalty shootout Fiorentina won against Atalanta 2-1 all goals coming from the penalty spot Vlaovic scoring two on both sides of the half uh, Jim City goal was ruled out for offside. That would have given Atalanta the lead. They then get another. They then get a, a rightful penalty. Uh, step on uh, Gosens, but cannot find an equalizer. Uh, Fiorentina this is a pretty big, big win for them. I gotta say. Inter also dropping points against the Sampdoria team that actually played quite well and one has to say that maybe this win of Milan and Sampdoria in the first round this could be could, could be, be bigger points than one would have uh, imagined uh, but there were some great goals in that game uh, Di Marco a great free kick to give Inter the lead uh, the Yoshida goal yeah was deflected and looked kind of uh, it was a freak goal but then also uh, the way Barella crosses in and Lato Martinez out of you know running fully pulling it in the net fully forth giving into the lead again looked quite good but i think the better volley was from augello in the 47th to make an equalizer and then uh, a complete tactical mishap by inter who make five substitutions by the 68th minute however uh, they have done an injured player i think with zensi and they cannot make any substitution have to end the game with 10 men and dropping points so uh, the champions dropping points for the first time um another we of course need to talk about milan's performance against lazio um then it was only two nil i think flattered lazio this was thorough dominance by milan starting without you who was out for covid and without slatan uh and i have to say especially midfield tonali was the man of, of the match winning balls left and right and being a very dominant pro um 
uh, presence in midfield, uh, I have to say, uh, a, a player trying to transform. He basically played a little bit like Kessie uh, did last, last season. And if Kessie now can get his uh, game up as well, uh, and then you have Benas there, I think Milan might have. And if you can find a way to play those three, I know they're mostly the uh, defensive mid midfield, but you don't have a number 10 up there. But uh, all three have really great options. I mean, Tonali has a great passing range. So you have uh, Kessie, uh, who is battling, and um, Benasseo can do all of that. You might have the best midfield in the league. A uh, very athletic uh, team that Milan has. I always find them a little bit lightweight up top uh, with Diaz and uh, Leao and, and this time uh, Rebic also playing uh, up there. But I think they can find this. And if you have done the physical presence of a Giroud and Slatan in addition, you may have you may be able to play without a number 10. Although Brahim, I actually like the player in many, 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 many ways. Uh, the goal, first goal, Leao initiates, makes a 1-2 with Rebic uh, and nicely pulled because in a 4 for 45 minute a point where Milan honestly should have already led. Then they get a penalty that Kessie puts against the bar. And I was ruining that miss because I thought, yeah, you had such a dominant, such a great performance in the first half. And now Lazio might find a freak equalizer. It never came. Who came was Zlatan. Um, and... You know, I don't mention hairstyles a lot, but Slatan's braid, uh, stuff of legends, absolutely stuff of legends. Um, and I think he's on one of the few people who can actually pull that off. Uh, my daughter then immediately needed to do the same thing with my uh, mine, but it did not look as elegant because there's not as much hair yet. In any case, Slatan scores. Uh, although the goal was all Rebic, uh, who takes the ball, takes it down, a uh, great pass in and just Slatan has to tap in. However, he also has, has, has to mention that Slatan uh, was tying his shoes and he sees there's an attack and he, with open laces, he runs and it's tied shoes to score. Um, I honestly think a 2 0 is flattering Lazio. Uh, at the end, uh, Sari was losing his temper and so on. Um, but that was a very positive performance by Milan, who, as I said, have a, uh, have to play Juve on the next weekend. Yeah, big game. Uh, but also Liverpool midweek, so a pretty tough week. Lazio, Liverpool, Juve, that's a gauntlet just ahead of you. Uh, Roma get a, a very weird win in the sense there were so many chances probably even better chances for Sassolo than Roma uh, Sassolo had a goal disallowed uh, Cristante with a really nice dead ball um, free kick uh, variant uh, getting the lead uh, Duricic uh, basically pull putting all the line making one one and then chances left and right I think Sassuolo probably would have deserved the win a little bit more than Roma, but then it's El Sharavi who scores in the last minute uh, in, in stoppage time. The What you want, everyone thought was the winner, uh, Mourinho running down the, down the sideline. I mean, I don't understand Mourinho because this Roma team, we thought they will be defensively better. No, <laughs> they are open as always and play forward also. Uh, I think Roma will be a spectacle to, to watch this season. I hope they can keep up the good uh, run, the run of form and late equalizer for um, Sassuolo is rightfully called off for offside, which would have been the mood killer right there. And then yesterday evening, while I was shooting the Premier League video, actually, I saw... Uh, also Bologna uh, beating Verona deservedly, but uh, the goal came very, very late uh, through Swanberg, but Bologna fully deserved that. And so uh, we have that uh, inter-draw driving point. So we have Roma, Milan and Napoli, the three teams that are still uh, with a full re re record. But however, you see already that Inter are uh, still the favorites. You were falling behind now. Uh, that's all I want to say for now and I'll leave you with all the stats and the schedule for the next uh, weekend. Again, Juve Milan, it's all that you need to know there.
Well, in any case, please drop a line below what you thought about the Serie We You can give me a thumbs up, enjoy this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.